Good evening and welcome to your bedtime story. <laughs> My name is Betsy and I'm a librarian with Frederick County Public Libraries. Throughout the past week, we have been reading the 2020-2021 Black Eyed Susan nominees. So tonight, I'm going to move on to a book called Song for a Whale by Lynn Kelly. Lynn Kelly lives in Houston, Texas, where she works as a sign language interpreter and writes books for children. She majored in psychology in college, but after taking a few sign language courses, decided that was the field she wanted to stick with. She has worked as a sign language interpreter ever since then. This work has taken her from classrooms to hospitals to Alaskan cruises. So now um, she no longer works as a um, full-time sign language interpreter. She continues to write children's literature and she lives in Houston with her bulldog Spike <laughs> and her, looks like a golden retriever or a um, Labrador retriever named Holly. So Lynn Kelly has written a book known as, called Song for a Whale. In the spirit of modern day classics, like Fish in a Tree and Counting by Sevens, comes the Schneider family book award-winning story of a deaf girl's connection to a whale whose song can't be heard by his species and the journey she takes to help him. From fixing the class computer to repairing old radios, 12-year-old Iris is a tech genius, but she's the only deaf person in her school so people will often treat her like she's not very smart. If you've ever felt like no one was listening to you, then you know how hard that can be. When she learns about Blue 55, a real whale who was unable to speak to other whales, Iris understands how he must feel. Then she has an idea. She should invent a way to sing to him, but he's 3,000 miles away. How will she play her song for him? Full of heart poignancy, heart and poignancy, this affecting story by sign language interpreter Lynn Kelly shows how a little determination can make some big waves. And so it is um, recommended for ages 8 to 12 years or grades 3 through 7. It is 304 pages long and published by Yearling in December of 2019. So let's go to song for a whale. We're just going to read chapter one, give you a little taste of the book. Chapter one. Until last summer, I thought the only thing I had in common with that whale on the beach was a name. I sat with Grandpa after collecting shells and driftwood scattered along the shore and wildflowers from the dunes. The shells and driftwood were for Grandma and the flowers were for the whale. Grandpa had asked how school was going and I told him it was the same, which wasn't good. I'd been at that school for two years and still felt like the new kid. Grandpa patted the sand next to him. Did you know she was probably deaf too, he signed. I didn't have to ask who he meant. The whale had been buried there for 11 years and my parents had told me enough times about what had happened that day. I shook my head. I hadn't known that and I didn't know why grandpa was changing the subject. Maybe he didn't know what to tell me anymore about school. The whale had beached herself the same day I was born. When she was spotted in the shallow waters of the Gulf, some people stood on the shore and watched her approach. My grandma ran into the cold February water and tried to push her away from land, as if she could make a 40-ton animal change her mind about where she wanted to go. That was really dangerous. Even though the whale was weak by then, one good whack with a tail or flipper could have knocked grandma out. I don't know what I would have done jumped in like she did or just stood there. She wasn't born deaf like we were, Grandpa signed. The scientists who studied her said it had just happened. Maybe she'd been swimming near an explosion from an oil rig or a bomb test. When Grandpa told a story, I saw it as clearly as if it were happening right there in front of me. 
His signing hands showed me the whale in an ocean that suddenly went quiet, swimming over there, over there, and over there, trying to find the sounds again. Maybe that's why she'd been there on our Gulf of Mexico beach, instead of in the deep ocean waters where she belonged. Say whales didn't swim so close to shore. Only her on that day. A whale can't find its way through the world without sound, Grandpa added. The ocean is dark, and it covers most of the earth, and whales live in all of it. The sounds guide them through that, and they talk to one another across oceans. With the familiar sounds of the ocean gone, the whale was lost in her new silent world. A rescue group came to the beach and tried to save the whale, and they called her Iris. Grandma asked my parents to give the name to me, too, since I'd entered the world as the whale was leaving it. After the marine biologists learned all they could from her, she was buried right there on the beach, along with the unanswered questions about what had brought her to that shore. We lived on that coast until the summer after second grade, when my family moved to Houston for my dad's new job. Since then, we went back just once or twice a summer. The good thing about our new home was that it was closer to my grandparents. I liked being able to spend more time with them, especially since they were both deaf like me. But we all missed the beach and I missed being around kids like me. My old school had just a few deaf kids, but that was enough. We had our classes together and we had one another. But it's different for us, Grandpa signed. Out here there's more light and all we need is our own small space to feel at home. Sometimes it takes time to figure things out, but you'll do it. You'll find your way. I wish I'd asked him then how long that would take. In the end, it was a pretty short chapter. <laughs> so um, Song for a Whale is, of course, in our novelist database that you can find at fcpl.org. And it is listed as um, character-driven, moving, and suspenseful realistic or STEM fiction. And then there is a theme of living with an invisible disability. And so recommended read-alikes include, make sure I can read the authors when I pull them up here. The Thing About Jellyfish by Ali Benjamin. Charlie and Frog, A Mystery by Karen Kane. A Boy Called Bat by Alana K. Arnold. Moo by Sharon Creech. And Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus by Dusty Bowling. So, again, these are part of our Black Eyed Susan books for 2020-2021. Um, we have the, I have the option to read them through our e-content providers. I read um, Song for a Whale through Libby by Overdrive. You can also request the books um, for hold, now that we are offering curbside pickup, you could certainly choose to read a physical hard copy. Um, go to www.fcpl.org forward slash curbside for more information. And of course, we have started our summer reading challenge, Explore, Invent, Transform Your Story. And you can find more information on that at www.fcpl.org forward slash summer. So I will see you on Monday for the next set of our Black Eyed Susan chapter reads. All right, Monday at 8 o'clock. I'll see you then. Good night.